Greetings, salutations, and welcome to the Krieger Cast. I'm your host, Patrick Krieger. I'm joined once again by Matt. What's going on? So Matt and I were talking about our experiences the other day when I was recording some uh, spooky stories with Daryl and Stephanie. And that got me thinking that I uh, I should share some spooky stories with Matt. Yeah, the team no sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that. You had a strange experience today, though, but that was clearly not ghost related, but it was, it was spooky. Yeah, it, okay, so it had been raining here um for about it was a dark and stormy night it was a dark and stormy night probably around 9 p.m where i started you know hearing noises right as the normal you know sounds of rain and stuff um it was pretty hard but then it started dying down and around 9 p.m i was like hearing like weird movement and voices and stuff like that and i was like what is that but i paused the tv because i had the tv going at the time um and then the sound stopped and i go what what could that be and so i you know turn the tv on don't think anything of it start hearing the sounds again i'm like is this a tv so i turn it off i don't hear anything and then i start hearing like a little like people talking and i go okay but it sounds like far enough away and i thought i had all my windows up so i didn't think it was anyone outside so i start freaking out I, you know, just pick up one of my rifles and I start clearing rooms in my apartment and I go, you know, just, you know, for my own sake of mind. And, all right, no one's in the apartment. So I have no immediate threat. Um, start closing off doors, um, you know, to all the rooms and stuff and eliminating certain sounds. I'm like, you know, making sure that all the windows are closed and if they're not, you know, seeing if anyone's outside. And I do notice that across the way there are people in their apartment talking fairly loudly and their windows are always down. And I notice. And so I'm like, okay, I must have heard it. You know, I bounced off a wall. It was doing some weird acoustic thing. I rationalized it in my head and, you know, was, you know, went off on that and, you know, decided, all right, we're good. I closed a certain door um, and then the, you know, the acoustic, uh, uh, you know, the the sound bouncing off the walls stopped, and then you know the uh, the issue stopped, and uh, you know I no longer hear them. And they, you know the people could have stopped talking; they could have gone to bed. Um, who knows? But yeah, I don't hear the the voices anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's good that you're not hearing the voices, man. It's never good to hear voices. No, I uh, try to eliminate voices. You know, so. so um what i've decided we're gonna do a little bit is talk about some famous creepy pastas and you don't seem to be too familiar with the concept of creepy pastas are you i don't know what i mean like are we talking fettuccine like what's going on (laughs) uh it's interesting people say that there's different ways of pronouncing it but i've always pronounced as pasta um so it's the equivalent the internet equivalent of a campfire story Oh, okay. So, there are these stories that are written and edited and made to be as creepy as possible. Sure. So, one of them is the Russian sleep experiment. And first off, I'm going to show you a photo that is attached to this. All right. Jesus, guy, come on. I'm trying to sleep tonight. <clears throat> literally one of the creepiest things i've ever seen yeah what are you doing to me man uh google russian no. sleep experiment no, never photos oh to the images people, yeah to people yeah to our dear listener yeah no if you don't want to sleep tonight that if you, is. yeah what the hell man so the story goes russian researchers in the late 1940s of course were trying to conduct an experiment on uh, medicines that would keep you awake for multiple days speed basically and so what they did is they took a group of volunteers who were all political prisoners and said we will let you go if you will stay awake for 15 days i think it's proven that you can't stay awake more than five days right isn't yeah, it? like three yeah. or five days without sleep, and then you you your body starts shutting down. Uh, I think the longest is eight. 
that anyone's ever done. But yeah, it's like three or five days and you start having issues. Um, so yeah, if they could stay awake for 15 days, they would be free. Jesus. Okay. So they put them in a room with all the food and materials and reading materials that they would need for a 15 day excursion. (laughs) To to To, death. To death. And, um, they, they kept a couple cameras in the room and a couple windows so they could see into it, but it was an airtight room because... They were administering them a certain type of gas that would allow them to stay awake through the night. You know, and stay sane. After a few days, one of them just starts screaming. Yeah. Just just non-stop screaming. And so the others, one by one, turn off the cameras and cover the windows with papers and feces and such weird yeah this is real so (laughs) when i first heard it i was told it as if it was true oh it's not as far as i know no but man it it, it gets there uh it gets to the point where like it's clear that it's not real okay so these uh the, the screaming stops okay so they killed the dude if only. Oh, Jesus. No, actually, he screamed so much that he ripped his vocal cords. Excellent. And became mute. That's that's awesome. After a couple of days, they noticed there was no water coming out of the room. Which shouldn't be the case. You know, they should be... The researchers? Yeah, the researchers noticed that all the cameras were down. All the windows were blocked. There's no water coming out. But why would water come out? You know, restroom and so on and so forth. Oh, oh like yeah. sewage. Yeah, there was no liquids coming out. Not only that, but they could tell by the way the oxygen levels were fluctuating that all the participants were still alive, even though the screaming had stopped. They didn't know about the torn vocal cords at this point, because again, cameras and such down. But not only that, it was as if these people were working out incredibly intensely. 24 hours a day. And eventually they realized there's something seriously wrong. Maybe there's something burning in there. You know, that's consuming all this oxygen. We need to go in and check out what's going on. At which point, they find out that two of the guys are dead. One of them is filleted on the ground with all of his meat pulled from him. But is still alive, plugging the hole with the torn vocal cord, still screaming, but just not making any noise. And the other two are near skeletons, having been picking their own flesh off of their bones and eating it. Jeez. So the doctors go in and they try to help these people. And... Whenever they start administering anesthetics or anything like that, they scream in terrible pain. But when they start cutting on them or trying to stitch them together or whatever, they start laughing. Okay. And it's this whole thing about like their their perception of pain and um, and pleasure has changed completely. And eventually, it ends with all of the people dying, including some of the research involved. What? Yeah. Um, in fact, actually. It would probably not be a bad idea for me to do a reading of that um, for this channel for Halloween. Without me? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I could just read it verbatim. Oh, okay. The um, creepypastas are mostly, um, what do you call it, public domain. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's one of my favorite creepypastas. But now, in terms of it really messes with my head. Like, that, that, that really bothers me. The, the Russian sleep experiment really bothers me. And so I was just uh, wanting to share that botherment with you. Excellent. Yeah, just awesome choice of things to talk about tonight. I don't know why I agreed to this. <laughs> uh, On a night, I was already hearing sounds. <laughs> so um, there's another great story that's... Uh, Along the Canadian border, I think is the the name of the story. Again, it's implied to be true. 
but you know who knows a guy is going out with his buddy and they're uh they're u.s border patrol agents they're on snowmobiles in the middle of the winter and they're patrolling the border for those of you who don't know the canadian and u.s border are separated by a 30 or 60 foot gap it's a 30 feet on each side or 30 feet total um gap where there's no trees so they can see people crossing the border and so this guy and his buddy are are going out and they're cutting down saplings and stuff like that that are trying to grow into the the little gap there and eventually they find footprints in the snow they're like huh no one should be out here but you know let's go check out maybe it's a hunter who needs help maybe you know it's drugs who knows we need to find out so they get their guns together and go off and they find these footprints they go all the way to this cabin and in the cabin they find a dead guy and the whole floor is covered in blood and the guy's been eaten by something They're like drat you know bear attack or whatever and then they see off in the distance a humanoid creature with long claws that looks like a white skinned man that's bald but with really long fingers and he starts walking towards them so the guys decide eh we're getting the hell out of dodge so go back to their snow machines start going at which point they have to stop a couple you know miles down the road to clear more trees and things already there Jeez. And I'm like, the hell? This thing kept up with us in the snow at like 45 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, well, however fast a snowmobile goes. Yeah. This thing was running along with us and it starts trying to talk to them. Now, the things that make this story mildly believable is the guy got photos. And they're just fake enough to where, like, maybe they're not. And. The con- the concept of humanoid creatures bothers me. Oh yeah, that's that's frightening. Yeah, yeah, like the Wendigo. The Wendigo. You don't know the Wendigo. And we will not look into that tonight. Oh, we are talking about the Wendigo. Jesus. It, Christ. The Wendigo is literally the thing that scares me the most. Yeah, let's not do that. Save that for another topic. <laughs> another, another episode. <laughs> Jeez. Um, so in navajo folklore and in most native american folklore oh we're going into it yep oh my god there's this there's this concept of the wendigo the wendigo is a spirit that possesses the body of man and possesses the body of man when man does evil in the eyes of the gods. Oh, I think you've told me about this. Yeah, because it's literally like one of the things that scares me the most. So, what happens is if you are a human that consumes human flesh, you open the door to be possessed by a Wendigo. And the Wendigo's like big point is to consume human flesh. Like that's what it wants. And so when it inhabits your body, it makes you want to eat more human flesh. Okay. And so it's basically a crazy person. Yeah. In the woods, hunting and trying to kill you. There's a few uh, interesting renditions of it that have been talked about over the years. Like often it's portrayed with the head of a deer you might have seen that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's this kind of theory has been, you know, in several movies I've seen. Yeah, yeah, like um, this is a common depiction of it. I'm showing him the one with the rotting deer head. Yeah, no, that's actually exactly the thing that I was about to sh- or talk about earlier. Um, that movie I was t- telling you about. That, um, or it was about to go into, and then we got off and Ooh. a different topic. I'm just going to show you a couple more pictures, and then I would like to hear about that. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so uh, mostly just a pale, you know, skinned person that, you know, tears people apart. Mm-hmm. Some people mm-hmm. think it's smart and tries to talk to you. Some people say it can throw its voice. 
you know, there's all sorts of theories on it. But just humanoid creatures really kind of creep me out. Yeah, that's very cool. So what's this uh, movie you want to talk about? I'm trying to find the title. Um, Okay. Give me just two seconds. Boom. It's called The Ritual. It's on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. I'm 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 down. The name's creepy. All right. So these five guys are at a bar um, in England, and so they're all you know local Englishmen, and it's modern times, and so they're all you know having drinks, watching the game, you know, football as they call it, soccer for us Americans, um, and you know they're watching the game. After the game, you know they leave the bar. And, uh, they, you know, are walking down the street and they're like, you know, some of the guys are like, all right, man, I'm going to turn in for the night. You know, it's pretty late, whatever. And one of the guys is like, no, man, let's go to the liquor store. Let's grab, you know, some drinks. Let's keep this thing going. You know, cause mm-hmm. he's, you know, they haven't seen each other for a while or whatever the situation was. And they go into the liquor store, two of them, the guy that really wanted the liquor. And then one of the guys that didn't want anything, but he went in anyway. And there's a robbery. Um, and the store clerks get macheted and the guy that didn't want to go get drinks gets macheted while the guy that really wanted drinks is hiding in the liquor store. And the robbers are fairly discreet about this. And then they run out the back door. So the group of friends that was waiting for him outside didn't see anything until after the or you know the friend that wanted the drinks comes out and then it's this whole thing and then they plan on all right you know after the whole funeral and everything they plan on all right this one buddy he really wanted to do this hike out in like sweden or something you know to uh i think i'm familiar with this but keep going yeah so they they go out of the you know they eventually they make plans they go on this hike and it's supposed to end at this resort and you know they've got this huge awesome trail through these mountains and you know along this forest but not into this forest and then one of the guys trips and you know breaks his ankle or whatever and you know they're getting pretty tired and they're like all right we see the resort it's right there it's just, we have to go through this forest and all the guys are like i don't know man there's this clear trail it's perfect you can see the whole thing it's no big deal the forest, I don't know, you know, it looks kind of spooky. And the other guys are like, come on, don't be, you know, don't be a girl or whatever. Um, so they eventually go through this forest. They find this cabin. It's abandoned. They're hearing voices. They go into the cabin. Each one of them has a different paranormal dream or, you know, like uh, episode. Mm-hmm. And they all see like similar but different things. And you know uh they all get freaked out overnight they you know and then they wake up in the middle of the night because they had to take refuge in the cabin because it was raining and whatever yeah yeah um so in the morning they're like we need to leave we need to get out of this forest and they can't they can't find a way out and they're seeing carvings everywhere they're seeing all this weird stuff and they hear this like you know they, they see they hear a lot of wrestling in the forest and they're just freaking out and they're trying to get out, but they can't. And then they're hiking forever. And then they see this uh, like ridge. And one of like the healthier guys who was the guy that saw the murder happen in the liquor store is like, all right, let me go run up to this top of this ridge and you know see what we're working with because mm-hmm. we can't see anything in this really dense forest. And he runs up there. And it's a bunch of these like really thin, you know, trees. And then he sees this like hand with really long fingers wrap around it and a face similar to the second face Mm -hmm. that you showed me. And similar to that Russian uh, face you showed me, you know, and his huge teeth and all that. um, Poke around and he starts freaking out, runs down. He's like, I would too. We need to (laughs) get out we're going the opposite direction and then one of the other guys is like no this is north we're going north and the other guys are like what no 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 we need to go opposite way he's like no trust me we got to follow this heading and you know 
they keep going. Gets nighttime. They you know camp and stuff, and then one of their tents gets fucking you know. It's okay. Uh, they, one of their tents gets taken up into the air. You see it getting taken up in the air, and then screaming and everything. And then the next morning, they find their buddy all filleted out in a tree. And they're just tripping out at this point. And they're basically running with, like, broken legs. And they're all wounded and dehydrated no food and just, you know, tripping out of their minds. And they're all seeing, you know, they're like, did you see what happened? You know, and then they're just freaking out. And they, one by one, gets picked off. And then the one guy who was the survivor in the murder at the liquor store sees this beast similar to the one you just showed yeah. him the, the head and he runs into this village of people and it's like a you know cabin all bunch of cabins but like old style cabins and people dress very oddly and they're speaking this really weird language that he, you know you can't understand and he gets in there and they take him you know prisoner and what they do is basically they sacrifice someone or something to this beast and they're all kneeling and they don't look at it in the eyes oh and it's the, it's that exact beast and he takes it and he goes into the forest and they don't he doesn't bother those people and he lets them be and he protects them and uh he eventually breaks out and he kills the beast by like stabbing it in the stomach or something <laughs> and okay. yeah i don't know and uh he makes it out and oh no no no! he doesn't kill it he wounds it it turns around he makes it to this clearing where he can see the land mm -hmm. or not land uh like civilization and he turns around and the monster's staring at him at the tree line and he's far enough away and he turns around and the monster like kind of screams at him and then he just screams right back and then the monster goes back into the forest and then he walks out huh yeah crazy crazy movie it I watched it with uh, Ted, and then I, I watched it alone, which was a mistake. <laughs> and then I watched it with Will, and uh, third time around, you see, you know, you know what's coming, and you, know, you start looking for the little different things. And yeah. It's like, all right, you know. But it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. It's it's identical that in the movie, it, that beast is identical to that picture you showed. Hmm. Weird. So another one of my favorite uh, creepy pastas um, that reminds me of the story you just told is this one about a guy out on a ranch in the winter. And I think I made you listen to that because I, I love that story. Um, you know what? Uh, just dear listener, just so you know, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a couple creepy pasta readings for this podcast. No, just for this winter. Or uh, just for this season. No, not with you. Don't worry about uh, it. I'll do it. I'll on, do... The, on the channel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll okay. do it on my own time. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> I'm trying to sleep this year, guy. I was. I actually have one pulled up that says, uh, this story is guaranteed to make you not want to sleep tonight. Oh, yeah. It's from uh, r slash no sleep. <laughs> um, but anyway. So the, the story is about this guy like out in Montana who's taking care of a ranch for the winter while... Um, while it's closed because of the snow. And so he's out living off the land with his Mosin Nagat. Mosin Nagat. Why? Where is this rancher living? Out of Montana. Okay. And why does he have a Mosin Nagat? Because everyone has a Mosin Nagat. They, Not me. They're cheap. Yeah, he probably has a Remington 700. You could pick up a Mosin Nagat real easy. You could pick up a Remington 700. Remington 700. Much easier. No, for like four times the price. Oh, for four times the price, but much easier. So this guy has his Mosin Nagat, a few spam cams of ammo, Jeez. and he's out there in the woods living off the deer and the, the coyotes and, you know, making friends with the horses. And then there's Wendigo in the forest. And so he, he goes out with his Mosin Nagat and hunts the Wendigo. You know what's funny? I think there was a Mosin Nagat in the movie. I, I wouldn't doubt it. It, it there, there was like a couple guns. One was like a Lee Enfield. And then there was like a, uh, a Mosin Nagat. And I think he used the Mosin Nagat on some dude to get out. Yeah. Dude, what's up with these 
stupid guns. <laughs> Most Nagats are fantastic. They're, Moist nuggets. You can't run away from these things. Yeah, yeah. It's how you kill the Wendigos with the Mosin Nagat. Apparently. Um, yeah, and so, like, that's one the scene that made me think of that is eventually he scares the thing away and it's, like, at the tree line yelling at him. So he yells back at it. Yeah. Yeah, the Wendigo. Mosin Nagats and yelling at Wendigos, man. What's up with this? It's the, it's the way to live life, man. Mosin Nagats and yelling at your, your fears. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, yeah, so let's talk about other cool horror films we've seen. So you, you just saw The Ritual. I think the film that we can both uh, say is like our kind of our creepiest, or at least one of the things that first got us into creepy things, is uh, Outpost. I was just about to say, if you bring up Outpost, I'm not going to talk about that. Outpost, dear listener, is a fantastic film. Uh, think Nazi zombies, but... But it's so much more than that. No, it's 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 an enemy that can't die. That's a Nazi zombie, but more well trained. Like they are better trained than the most modern, highly trained militia out there. Yeah, the the the, the zombies in Outpost are literally my worst fear. So they, um, their shtick is that they're like basically all powerful. They they can't be killed. There's they can like whatever you do to them, they'll heal from. Yep. Um, they have mild teleportation abilities. Yeah, didn't quite understand how they figured that one out. Uh, well, the deal is the the machine. The better the machine's running, the more their abilities. But that's beside the point. Um. But here's the thing that makes them worse than any zombie you've ever come across in literature. They get off on torturing people. Yeah. And that that just really, really bothers me. Like, they were trying to get these uh, these guys, like they're hunting these special forces guys, and they're, um, they're trying to get them out of the bunker. Because the machine isn't working well enough for them to have their teleportation ability. So they want them out of the bunker. Because at this point, they're not even sure, like, that the zombies have a thought process, which is weird. But the the zombies aren't exactly sure they can come back if they die right now. Because they're not sure if the machine's fully working. So they're trying to get the special forces guys out of cover. And so they've captured one of them and are hammering spent shell casings into his kneecaps. And that is just a god-awful thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Outpost. It's worth a watch. Definitely it, not. If you like zombies, if you like Nazis, if you like horror films, <laughs> it, it's a it's a thing to watch. The thing I find funny is they they happen to be Nazis, but they're not Nazis. Like that's even a plot point in the film is like an SS unit was sent to deal with them and goes missing because the zombies kill them all. Well, it's not actually said they killed them. They might have joined forces with the zombies. Possibly. You know, they were wearing Nazi uniforms. Yeah, yeah, because it was a Nazi experiment. But anyway. Yeah, Outpost. Better than uh, Red Snow or Dead Snow. Well, the interesting thing with Outpost is that like, once everyone was dead, they sent in another crew. And they just kept sending in crews. Yeah. you know you know soldiers so i think it was there i think it was a a a plan to keep killing these things and keep seeing if they could kill either the nazis or if the nazis were calling out for like more people to kill i don't know what the deal is yeah that was the weirdest thing is like at the the end of like the the film i don't want to spoil anything because i really do think you should watch it but yeah the the film repeats itself and that's kind of interesting. But yeah, uh, Outpost is definitely a film worth watching in terms of a creepy film. Uh, I'll talk about it again. The Bunny Man. That's just giving it a blank look. The Bunny Man, I think, is a perfect example of a low-budget film. It is, it is glorious. It is what I want to do with my film. It's an awful film. 
I'm going to be blunt about that. It's an awful film. The concept is a man in a bunny outfit is killing people. Where? Doesn't matter. Just somewhere. Oh, okay. Out in the woods. See, when I go out camping and hiking and, you know, frolicking in the hillsides, like I do. <laughs> uh, Tra-la-la. You know, skipping to and fro. Uh, I don't think about these things. As like, like oh, there's just some dude out there killing people. Because what's that? What did they have to sustain themselves? So it's like irrational. So with the bunny man, they eat the people. Okay, yeah, they eat people. You need a high volume of people, like to, you know, for for okay, for real things to happen, like real life, you need. All right, like this is my whole concept of zombies. Like, if zombies were ever a thing, it, it in my eyes it would have to be some sort of like influenza or virus that consumes the person, making them you know rabid. basically rabid and yeah. brain dead. And all they need is they just they need to eat something hot and meat, and they need hot meat. They're they're carnivorous and they need to eat, and that's just what it is. That's the virus. And so theoretically, all you need is a 22 caliber rifle to, you know, you know, punch a couple holes in them, drain the blood, the body becomes useless. Let's say the, you know, the brain can still function, but, you know, without, let's say, oxygen or whatever, you know, the issue is, the virus, but it's still got this human quality that if the blood doesn't flow, the body won't move, you know, so it becomes essentially non-threat. Yeah, that's one of the things about zombies is that they're scientifically impossible. Even if you have a reanimated corpse, it's not going to move around too long without blood flowing. Exactly. You need blood flow. So, 22 caliber, that'll punch holes, yep. that'll you know drain blood, that, and you can carry a ton of it, and it's ideal for zombies in real life. Men are full of water. Do you know this? I am quite aware. And if you poke holes in it, the water comes out. And the man dies. Okay. Sorry. Uh, um, where were we going with that? Um, oh, but I'm eating. Okay, yeah. so... So, okay. In order for a person, let's say, that just gets off on being a cannibal mm-hmm. in the forest, he needs a good amount of food to sustain himself, you know? And then be able to sustain himself well enough to be able to maintain muscle mass to overpower and kill other people. Okay. That being said, you need a high traffic amount. You need you need to be somewhere with a lot of people. Or a constant amount of people. And something that won't get quarantined and like, you know, a, a bunch of SWAT guys come in and, you know, take you out. Yeah, but that's the conceit of a movie. No, I gotta rationalize this so I can sleep tonight, guy. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I don't uh, know. That's just like where I find flaws with like movies. I'm like, all right, come on, that 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 can't happen. You know, a dude with a mask with a with a machete going around hacking people up and then you know blending in with like society. That's totally a thing that could totally happen. You know, he just goes in, people, like, he sees people going off camping in this area that, you know, is a popular tourist attraction because it's an abandoned campsite. And then he just goes in, hacks them up, and then, you know, goes about his business. Totally doable. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's a thing. You know, dude hacks people up, wears their faces on his face. That's a thing. Like, I could totally see that. That happened. It's called that Dean. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And, you know, it's... I hope he's not like Beetlejuice. This is the third time he's been mentioned in a podcast. Oh, well, there you go. Oh. Um, but, you know. What is even Be- Beetlejuice? I saw the movie, but like, you know. Beetlejuice, he's a... Uh, by the way, that just so you guys know, that's one, the third time Beetlejuice was said this podcast, and also the third time Beetlejuice was mentioned was in this podcast. <laughs> um... No, uh, Beetlejuice is like a, a, a farrier of spirits, from what I get. Like, he's a... Just a bad spirit. He, he's a ghost. And he gets power from being known. That's a common thing, though. Like, f- 
Freddy Krueger yeah. got power from being known. Well, he, he got power from fear, I thought. Yeah, but it's specifically people being afraid of him. Yeah, exactly. So I guess it's a fear and knowing. Yeah, so anyway. So go hand in hand. I don't know. I even watched a Beetlejuice cartoon series as a kid. And I couldn't that was tell a cartoon you series? Yeah, that was a cartoon series. Because, you know, I, like Beetlejuice is the perfect topic for kids. Well, I mean, I saw the movie, and I'm blanking on the actor's name. It doesn't matter. Um, he's a funny, funny actor. Yeah, I think he was Batman, too. And I know he was Batman. Michael Keaton. Mm. He is an amazing actor. He He's an awesome dude. And playing Beetlejuice, that was, I mean, it was, it's like a PG movie. And uh, it might have been PG-13 because it's kind of weird. Yeah. Um, I think there's some breasts in there. I don't know. Um. But, I don't think there's any nudity. No, but... not, no nudity, but it's just large amounts of cleavage. I don't know. For whatever reason, I've got that thought in my head of from that movie. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not just thinking of cleavage right now. I was going to say, too easy to make the joke. I yeah. wasn't going to pick that low-hanging fruit. Um, but uh, I don't I haven't seen the movie in forever. But Well, tis the season. You should maybe give it a watch. Yeah, I don't know. I was literally spent like an hour tonight looking at movies on uh, amazon prime and mm. like most of the movies i want to watch mm-hmm. you have to buy and aren't even viewable on this uh app right now uh is it on the flicks uh the netflix got signed out on this tv and i didn't feel like logging in mine fair enough and because i'm logged in on my on my tv in my room so i was like yeah i don't feel like it um but i was i mean all the movies i was looking into were Lone Survivor, American Sniper, 13 Hours, Sicario 1 and 2, you know, Black Hawk Down, because today is the 25th anniversary of uh, the Battle of Mogadishu. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you're really into the rom-coms then? Yes, rom-coms. That's my uh, my genre of choice. Um, (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. Really? So it's the 25th anniversary. Wow. I guess, dear audience, that tells you when we recorded this. Um, As Matt does not know. I'm building a backlog of videos to post for while I'm gone. Well, there you go. So, um, yeah. Well, actually, since it is 12.52 a.m., um, it was the 25th anniversary yesterday, oh. technically. But when I woke up, it was the 25th anniversary because it was yesterday. Um, <laughs> earlier in the morning, whatever. Um, but yeah, man. The Moog. Black Hawk Down. Yeah... Tis the month of Spooktober, though, so we should stick to spooky. Spooky. Um, I kind of want to see the movie The Babysitter, the Netflix movie. It looks awful. What's the babysitter? It just came out for Halloween. It's about a babysitter that's trying to kill a kid. See, that bothers me. Kids being killed. That well, I mean, he doesn't. He, spoiler alert, he doesn't get killed. What, the baby? Well, he's not a baby. He's like a... 10 year old but yeah 10 year old and you need a babysitter no that's the conceit of the movie okay so well okay so spoiler alert, he doesn't die how do you know i saw a review of it oh i watch a, so i watch a lot of reviews very few movies um <laughs> the movies i like to watch the movies i like legitimately like to watch are schlock films like because i find them funny and i also know that no one out there has reviewed them like, no one out there has reviewed the lights. Well, what about that group of dudes that watches those horrible B-movies? There are so many groups of dudes that watch horrible B-movies, but I know the one you're talking about. We need that... two more dudes to make the group of dudes, and then we should review schlock films. I would adore that. I would really adore that. Like, get Steven and, you know, someone else. Not, you know, I don't know. Maybe. Steven would be on board. I don't know anyone else who would like it. Three of us would be enough. Yeah. Three of us would be enough. Um, yeah, because, like, who's ever reviewed The Lights? Who's ever going to review The Bunny Man? Oh, you know what? We could get Jack on board. Jack would like that. Okay. I've never met him. He's a good dude. Good dude. That's what I hear. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll do that. So, dear listener, expect that. Yeah. Maybe. Future episodes. Future episodes. Uh, bad movie cast. I feel like every episode you've mentioned, well, but that's another episode yeah they're just creating more content you need to be logging this down (laughs) yeah i should have a notebook uh dear listener i should have a notebook 
You know, it's interesting, though. We're, we're getting traction. In, in case a listener has somehow managed to make it this far, uh, at this point, we have 11 subscribers. Ooh. And uh, we're getting uh, about an average of 15 to 20 views per video. Crunchwrap Supreme sounds really good right now. All right. So on that note, dear listener, until next time, see you out there.